Most introductions to trigonometry involve the use of a right angle triangle where we label sides according to the angle we're considering using opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. And you learn these particular uh, definitions for sine, cos, and tan. Unfortunately, this restricts you to only using acute angles. And when we want to expand the definition so we can use larger angles, we put the angle in a coordinate system. Now what we do is we put what's called the initial arm along the x-axis and we rotate either in a positive direction, which is going upward from the x-axis, or a negative direction, which is going down. Now you see when we put the angle in a coordinate system, we can give what's called the terminal arm a point. This is a point on the terminal arm, x, y, and we use the letter r for the distance from the origin to the point. Now the first thing to notice here is the Pythagorean relationship, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now x and y can be positive or negative depending which quadrant we land in, but by definition we always make the r value positive and we give new definitions to sine, cos, and tan. Now these definitions are consistent with what you learned before. The sine being y over r is the same as opposite over hypotenuse, cos adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tan being opposite over adjacent. But what this allows us to do is to create larger angles that no longer are restricted to being in a right triangle. Now in this diagram I've got four angles, all of which use the same numbers. For example, the terminal point here, the 4, 3, uh, results in a radius of 5. Same thing over here, the negative 4, 3, radius of 5, and so on. And what I have are four different angles all basically related by the angle that's next to the x-axis, but each one of these angles lies in a different quadrant. This ends in quadrant 1, this angle ends in quadrant 2, this angle in quadrant 3, and this angle in quadrant 4. And using the definitions that we've given you, sine being y over r, you notice that the sine value is positive in the first quadrant. It's also positive 3 over 5 in the second quadrant. So there's some duplication with, with values of sines, coses, and tans as we rotate around the coordinate system. To do that, we, we've devised a method called the cast rule just to remind you as to which trig ratio is positive and where. The word cast, written in here, the A refers to the fact that all trig ratios are positive when the terminal arm resides in the first quadrant. The S stands for sine because only the sine is positive when the angle has a terminal arm in the second quadrant. When we come down here into the third quadrant, you see both coordinates x and y are negative but if you put negative 3 over negative 4, which is the tan value, you come up with a positive value. Over here in the fourth quadrant, the 4 over 5 is the cos value, x over r. So this is just a little memory device helping you remember which quadrant the various trig ratios are positive in. They're all positive in quadrant 1, sine is positive in 2, tan is positive down here in quadrant 3, and cosine is positive in quadrant 4. The other thing I want you to notice from this diagram is that if you have the same angle against the x-axis as we have in all four examples, there's a lot of duplication involved in sines, coses, and tans for these four angles. Now I'm going to illustrate that with one other diagram here. I put all four angles 
in the same diagram and you can see it, it looks like a bow tie. Sometimes I refer to this as the bow tie theory. If this is angle theta right here uh, coming around to this line that's 180 degrees minus theta. Coming around to here it's 180, 180 plus theta and around here 360 minus theta. So whenever you have a set of four angles that are related in this way, you will have some similarities in their sine, cos, and tan values. Now, for example, let's look at 30 degrees. You get four angles as you go around here that have a 30 degree angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis. 30 degrees, 150, 210, and 330. Now, if you know that the sine value is 0.5, then the cast rule tells us that the sine will also be positive in the second quadrant. We get 0.5. But in the remaining two quadrants, again, a 0.5, but the values are negative. The same thing with the cosine. If you take the cosine of 30, you can check these out on your calculator. Cos of 30 is 0.866. We don't get another positive cosine uh, value until we get around into quadrant 4. So you see those are the values that you come up with for 30, 150, 210, and 330. All of which make a 30 degree angle with the x-axis. And here are the tan values. Again, you can check those with your calculator. The tan of 30 turns out to be 0.577. All four of these angles have a 0.577 in their uh, trig value. But if you take a look at these, tan of 210, that's the one that ends up here in quadrant 3, is the only other one that is positive. What you should probably do is, is pick, uh, pick any angle that you want. For example, if you pick 10 degrees and you check out the sine, cos, and tan of 10 and compare that to 170, which is 10 less than 180, or 190, which is 10 greater than 180, or 350, which is 10 less than 360. And see the similarities. The same numbers are coming up for all of these angles. It's just that you will find that they're all positive in this quadrant. Only the sine is positive here. The tan will be positive down here. And the cosine will be positive over in quadrant 4.